zooming into breakout rooms for engaging library instruction sessions. The reason I'm talking about this is that during the pandemic, I found that I was doing a lot of online instruction and I found that students, I didn't know if they were there or not. They didn't have their cameras on um, and they weren't giving me feedback. And since I did so much online instruction, I was getting bored with listening to myself talking. So I thought, well, how can I engage the students and make it more interactive? My name is Sarah Hamill. I'm the Business and Online Learning Librarian at FIU, and I'm going to share you share with you um, what how I adapted during the pandemic. Um, if you've seen my other presentation, you can also refer to me as Elvis. So, um, these are the components of the library instruction session that I'm going to talk about that I when I moved online. Um, I'll go into detail about each one. So, first thing I do. Um, everybody joins the Zoom room. I do a quick introduction. I give a quick overview of the library resources and services. I focus on the things that won't be covered when we do our group activity. For example, I focus on interlibrary loan, who I am, how to reach out to me, how to use the chat service, um, and some of the, the basic foundational services. And it all depends on what the, what the class is, if it's a higher level or a lower level, if it's a English comp or if it's a business class, what, what introduction I give. And part of the reason I did move to more engaging library instruction is because I feel this quote by Lloyd Alexander is 100% accurate. I know that uh, if I have to find and dig for the information and I get frustrated by not finding what I'm looking for, I'm more apt to learn from that experience than if the information is given to me. As we know, when we're, when we're in a face-to-face -face setting doing library instruction, we can gauge the audience. We can tell if they, a student has left the room mentally because they're not paying attention or their eyes are looking elsewhere or they're looking at us and they have a blank stare. Um, and then in that case, we can walk around the room and we can say, we can change the intonation of our voice, we can ask a question um, to bring the students back into the room mentally. In the online environment, if they don't have their camera on, they may have left not the room not only mentally, but also physically. So doing group activities, I found, engaged the students more, and again, it made it more fun for me. So I use a group, act group activities and use the breakout rooms in Zoom. I usually use a Google Doc, and the, the type of activities depends on the course, the instructor requests, and the time. I've done these types of sessions with, uh, for 55 minute classes up to three hours. Um, of course, I didn't leave them in breakout rooms for a full three hours. But basically what it is, is um, I have a set of different group activities. Each group, and I divide the students into groups and put them in breakout rooms. Each group has a different question that they have to work on and show and demonstrate. So here are a sample of the questions for like an English comp class. The discovery system. I g always give them a simple way to get to the discovery system, how to find the discovery system, how to find academic search complete, how to find a specific database, and then ask them to do a search and let them know that they will be demonstrating this, how to get to the information, what they can find in the, the specific database, and how to do a search within that database. And this is for the library catalog. Um, academic search complete. I always show Google versus Google Scholar versus the library because students still don't know about Google Scholar um, and oftentimes we know that everybody uses Google. So this is one question that I usually do a lot of chiming in when they're doing their demonstration. At the end I might ask questions and I do ask a lot of questions when they do their demonstrations and I say that th this was not on your, your your to-do list, what you had to do for this database, but it's because additional information that you might want to know about the database. Um, I usually cover, the depending on the course, the different databases, like if it's business, I'm going to cover business databases. If it's uh, English Comp, I cover CQ Researcher and other resources, opposing viewpoints, for example. Um, but I also always make sure I cover Boolean without using the library lingo. 
I also have at least one group search for a peer-reviewed article and then I ask what is a peer-reviewed article and ask for feedback from everybody in the class. Um, and then I always also make the students show how to cite, email, or save the information. And then they do group presentations. So they come back, they, they go into Zoom breakout rooms, and then they come back into the main room, and each group presents on their database that they learned about. The breakout rooms take about five to seven minutes, no more usually, I find. And then presentations can be long, or can they, they can be short, depending how engaged the students are. Um, and then at the end, I always leave time to wrap up, because I answer un any unanswered questions, or if some of the information went in a direction that I would have gone in a different direction, I always redirect them. And then I do a short assessment, tell me what you learned, um, what did you learn new today, and then I have them chime in. And with that, I'd like to say thank you, and I'll take any questions at the end.